family. Uh, do we have the scripture on the screen? Ta-da! Okay, now I need to keep the scripture on my screen. Uh, okay. Are you with me? Do you want to look it up yourself? Okay. Uh, Proverbs 1, the English Standard Version, verse 1 to 7. The Proverbs of Solomon, son of David, king of Israel. To know wisdom and instruction, to understand words of insight, to receive instruction in wise dealing, in righteousness, justice, and equality, to give prudence to the simple, knowledge and discretion to the youth. Let the wise hear and increase in learning, and the one who understands obtain guidance. To understand a proverb and a saying, the words of the wise and their riddles. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, church. My name is Lesejo, and I have the privilege of serving the body of Christ through Fellowship City as elder, as one of the elders and pastors here this morning. I have the privilege of sharing the word of God with you. Here's a couple of well-known sayings or words. Dipopo sal dance. A popular South African phrase, um, you, you can't make omelet without breaking eggs, which means it's impossible to achieve something without there being bad or unpleasant side effects. Or another saying that is, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. I can hear that that one is well known. <laughs> another saying is, if at first you don't succeed, try, 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 and try again. Okay, yeah, there's some popular sayings. Last one is, o five two, which is a South African saying, which means you could be close to trouble or something is close to happening. <laughs> Or five two. All these sayings have a lesson that they teach. Here are a couple of warning labels that you would find on some products. Remove child before washing. <laughs> or, or, or contains peanuts on a bottle of peanut butter. I, I guess the hope is that it would actually contain peanut butter, so that is a good warning. Don't iron while wearing a label found on clothes. There is a show on YouTube called Hot Ones. Celebrities meet with a show host for an interview while eating hot wings. The hottest and last bottle has this label, which includes, I am not inebriate, which means meaning drunk, so other, or otherwise not of sound mind. I am fully able to make a sound decision about the purchase of this product. <laughs> the hot sauce is so hot that the label warning is a confirmation that you're not drunk, that you're sound of mind when buying it and using it. All these labels indicate care or thought that should be taken when using the products. But clearly, sometimes people don't heed the warnings. Proverbs is a book that has and contains sayings that are more than just catchy sayings. Sayings that are fundamental life lessons and contain a different kind of wisdom than just popular culture wisdom. Wisdom that helps to navigate life and live life God's way. Proverbs also contain warnings. These warnings are helpful, are helpful as sometimes people do foolish things, intently or unintendedly. For either intended or unintended, irresponsible or thoughtless reasons. But we find the cure for that in Proverbs. Proverbs is part of what is called wisdom literature in the Bible, a book that teaches about wisdom. This morning we will see and be reminded that Proverbs speaks about wisdom. We will learn what wisdom is as we start our journey in this new series. The series, God's World, God's Way. We will see the fear of the Lord as the beginning of all wisdom and how Jesus is the wisdom of God. Four points this morning. We're going to look at the background of Proverbs. Proverbs pointing to Jesus and look at some expressions of wisdom in the first seven verses that Ben read for us. And we'll see Jesus as the epitome of wisdom. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you that we um, are able to come before your throne to sit under your teaching and that you, by the Holy Spirit, are here. 
I pray that you would be at work, that you would be removing any distractions and helping us to focus and to hear you speak. I pray that you would speak through my vocal cords those things that you'd want us to know, to say, and to do. And I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Proverbs' main contributor, Solomon. We first see Solomon in 1 Kings in the Old Testament where we see God ushering in a new king after David. God promised Solomon as the next king. God comes to Solomon in a dream. And let's read from verses 5 of chapter 3. This is what God asks and the response from David, which will follow. At Gideon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, ask what I shall, ask what I shall give you. And Solomon said, you have shown great and steadfast love to your servant, David, my father, because he walked before you in faithfulness, in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart toward you. And you have kept for him this great and steadfast love, and have given him a son to sit on his throne this day. And now, O Lord, my God, you have made your servant king in place of David, my father. Although I am but a little child, I do not know how to go out or come in. And your servant is in the midst of your people whom you have chosen, a great people, too many to be numbered or counted for multitude. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people, that I may discern between good and evil, for who is able to govern this, your great people? Solomon's answer is a strange one, isn't it? When you consider the question, if God were to ask us this question, what should I give you? If left to our own mind, and heart, we would ask for long life, riches, and revenge. We see this in verse 11, where that's the assumed answer, but we see Solomon asks for discernment between good and evil. Solomon asks for the ability to give practical help and guidance to the people that God has placed under his care. Solomon asks for wisdom. So God gives Solomon wisdom and great insight. First Kings 4, verse 29 to 30. God gave Solomon wisdom and very great insight and a breadth of understanding as measureless as the sand on the seashore. Solomon's wisdom was greater than the wisdom of all people of the East and greater than all the wisdom of Egypt. Verse 32 continues. He also spoke 3,000 proverbs and his songs were... 1005, he spoke of trees from the cedar that is in Lebanon to the hyssop that grows out of the wall. He spoke also of beasts and of birds and of reptiles, of fish, and people of all nations came to hear the wisdom of Solomon and from all the kings of the earth who had heard of his wisdom. So Solomon is sharing wisdom through the book of Proverbs, especially to his sons as those who are to follow him as kings. Some of the Proverbs are specifically addressed to those in the royal court. But even though the book has a clear royal audience that it is written to, it is still relevant to us. It is not only for those who are in the royal court, like Proverbs 16 and 31. Solomon wants the whole nation to live wisely and to follow his lead as king. Proverbs are written to people. The book is addressed to those described as simple-minded or youth as well in verse 4. The book also addresses the wise or the mature as well showing that you can never have too much or can never stop learning. See verses 5, let the wise hear. There is an exclusion, which is the fool, because the fool despises wisdom. But all young, all immature, all wise people can learn from Proverbs, as this is also meant for them. So Proverbs are meant for us to learn from, for us to use in learning how to apply God's wisdom in every aspect of life to learn God's world, God's way. Our second point, Proverbs pointing to Jesus. In 1 Kings 4 verse 32, Solomon is described and portrayed as a new Adam, wisely ruling a garden with trees. He knows the plants, birds, beasts, and reptiles. He is more wise than all the sons of the east. The sons of the east refers to all the people eastward from Palestine. The Hebrew nation thought of themselves as central and gave direction from their location. That is why east is in relation to Palestine. So Jacob fled for his life from Esau to the east. Job was known as the greatest of those in the east. The wise men who go to Jerusalem to see the child born in the manger as King Jesus are from the east. So the children of the east are known for their wisdom throughout the Old Testament. However, Solomon is known to be wiser than all of them, wiser than all of those from the east. He spoke thousands of proverbs like we see in verse 32. 
He wrote over a thousand songs, as we see that as well in verse 32, which is a link to Song of Songs in the Bible. So Solomon is beginning to fulfill the original call of mankind to rule wisely. However, Solomon, much like all other kings before him, fails to live wisely. Solomon enslaves people to help him build Jerusalem. He imported and exported arms, chariots, and horses to other countries. He had hundreds of wives and concubines. Solomon des- demonstrates wisdom but isn't fully committed to follow the laws of Yahweh. So Solomon, the wisest king, still failed as king. The whole Old Testament shows the need for a new king. All the kings before have failed. Solomon, who would have been compared to Adam, Solomon, who has a covenant with God and is obedient to God, seeks wisdom to serve God, knows creation, rules over creation in a similar way and in similar words to Adam. Solomon is portrayed as the new Adam, the one who is wise, who knows God's creation like the original Adam, but ultimately still fails and does not obey and follow God's law. So from the lineage of David comes the true king. From the lineage of David comes the true king, Jesus. Jesus is the word of life. Jesus is the one who created and sustains everything. Shows wisdom as a teacher of the law. Even in his youth, shows a liking to the law and the word. In Luke 2, we see his parents leaving the city, coming from a festival in Jerusalem, only to find that Jesus stayed behind to go to the synagogue as a child, where he is learning um, and asking great questions. Almost sort of like Home Alone, the movie, but the kid doesn't stay home. Jesus doesn't stay home to protect the house, but he goes to the synagogue, where he's learning and sitting around teachers and asking questions and learning. Even as we look at Proverbs, we can see and reflect on the wisdom of God or the wisdom that God gives us to live. There are other books in the Bible, in the Bible that point to and illustrate Proverbs pointing to the wisdom of God, true wisdom coming from a king who is greater than the author of Proverbs, greater than Solomon. Matthew 12 verse 42 says, Jesus, the queen of, she- of the south, which is Queen Sheba of Ethiopian descent, will rise up against up at up the judgment with this generation and condemn it because she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon and look, something greater than Solomon is here. This is Jesus answering the scribes and Pharisees when they asked to see a sign or a miracle from Jesus. Jesus answers them with Jonah as an illustration where Jonah is in the belly of the fish for three days and comparatively the son of man in the belly of the earth for three days. Jesus is himself dying and rising again in three days. Someone greater than Jonah is coming. Jonah who preached and people repented. Comparatively, Jesus who preached an unparalleled wisdom and people repented is greater than Jonah. Someone greater than Solomon who has wisdom is here, and this is Jesus. So the whole of the Old Testament point to a king who is coming, who is greater than all, and who does not fail like previous kings. Proverbs 1, which is the introduction to Proverbs, as wisdom literature has similar language to Isaiah 11. Both Proverbs and Isaiah 11 speak and draw comparisons to Jesus as the one foretold to come who is wise and the true king. This is what Isaiah looks like. I then, sh- I then a sh- shoot will grow from the stump of Jesse. Jesse is the grandson of Boaz and the father of King David. He is from the royal family line. Jesse means up, up, upright, firm or strong. So. A shoot will grow from the stump of Jesse, and a branch from his root will bear fruit. The Spirit of the Lord will rest on him, a spirit of wisdom and understanding, a spirit of counsel and strength, a spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. These are the same words we see in Proverbs 1, verses 2 to 4. His delight will be in the fear of the Lord. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes. He will not execute justice by what he hears with his ears but he will judge the poor, the poor righteously and execute justice for the oppressed of the land. He will strike the land with a scepter from his mouth and he will kill the wicked with a command from his lips. So from verse 3 of Isaiah, we see the words, a spirit of knowledge and of fear of the Lord. This is the same as the hook or the main line from the book of Proverbs, which is at the core of the book. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. So we'll come back to this fear of the knowledge. It's the beginning of knowledge. Our third point, expressions of wisdom. Wisdom is multi-layered in the book of Proverbs. And there are a few different expressions or layers about wisdom that we see 
within the first seven verses of Proverbs. We get to see different expressions of wisdom in the different words that are used. The first word, wisdom, is, is wisdom that we see. Wisdom is not primarily about your IQ. It's not the accumulation of knowledge. It is the practical ability to apply the right decision. Unlike knowledge, wisdom is applied knowledge. A fool or someone foolish isn't a person with a low IQ. A fool may know all the right answers, but may not know what to do with them. The book of Proverbs is written to help people to not only know the right thing, but to apply knowledge to the right thing. Wisdom is the ability to make right and godly and God-honoring decisions. Wisdom is the skill of living. It's practical knowledge. We see the same word used in Proverbs 22, verse 29, which speaks about the skillfulness of man standing before kings. The same word is used in the Amplified Bible translation of Proverbs 1, verse 2, which says, to know skillful and godly wisdom and instruction, to discern and comprehend the words of understanding and insight. This is wisdom, skill of living, which is practical. Wisdom involves skillful living in regards to family, to humility, to friends, to words, to laziness, and other areas of life. And these are some of the themes we will cover over the next seven weeks. Wisdom involves understanding how the world works. It's, God, it's God's world and how to practically live in God's, in God's way through the wisdom of Proverbs. So the second word is instruction. The word is an expression on, or uh, this, this word is an expression or layer of wisdom. Instruction could be better understood as correction. It is the reception of knowledge and understanding of the knowledge. Through accepting knowledge or information and understanding that knowledge or information, there is correction in the thinking and application. Correction is part of what also alludes to the relationship part of wisdom. Through relationships, we are able to receive correction and instruction. Through relationships, we may be able to receive and grow in wisdom. This is through a discipleship relationship where you are encouraged but also warned and rebuked through the lens of Scripture as we learn from God's Word. The most important of relationships where we should receive correction is also in submitting to the Lordship of God, in relationship with God. It is knowing the Word of God. It is walking through and learning the wisdom of God through his word. The warning label is that this book contains useful life-giving information. For it is useful life-giving information if the heart is not hardened and foolishness prevails, like we see in verse 7. Fools despise wisdom. Though the book of Proverbs, through the book of Proverbs, as we learn God's way and find God's correction and instruction in how we live in God's world. So the third word, insight. Suggests, suggests depth of discernment coupled with understanding sympathy. The word insight can be broken into four different parts or different types. Descriptive insight. This is insight from looking at something and learning from it. As you look, you can see what is described there. For example, looking at this image. What you will see in this image is Gold Lion, Walt Disney, and Marvel Studios movie. Through many different movies, all mostly good, there is a sense of deep insight that if a movie starts off with one of these logos, that you can trust the movie. I don't know what the lion stands for, but as the movie starts, almost a sense of calm sets in, in knowing that this will be good. That's descriptive insight. The insight from looking at something and learning from it. Diagnostic insight. Systematic process of analyzing and interpreting data to understand underlying causes, identify issues, and develop solutions. For example, these are two comrades runners. Leading up to the comrades, these are some of the words I heard, um, like sub 730, referring to the time you finish, carbo loading, something about eating, breaking in the running shoe, not breaking as in destroying the shoe, but, but making it softer or, or work better for you. I know that's strange. 
Words like jail, I think they were both at this game in the final week leading up to the Comrades Marathon. You also can't just use this jail, apparently. You have to time it. Um, words like down run, up run. They both completed the race because they had analyzed the race. It was an up run in direction. They identified possible issues like fatigue and running low on energy. That's the use of the gel. They identified how much mileage they have in the shoes to run, and they developed solutions for running. Um, these are some of the images from the race. I know Podumo doesn't look like he was running, but, <laughs> but believe me, he was. Um, there is another picture of joy and pain, but that's not going to be shared here. Um, they used insight to analyze and interpret the underlying causes, issues, and to develop solutions. If I do the same now, I will come to the conclusion that I don't need to run that monster of a race. So predictive insights. This is insights that help you know and understand what will happen in the future. This can help you make decisions. For example, Arsenal have had two failed attempts to win the league. <laughs> they have been chokers of note. Um, they bottled it. It's a term commonly used for people who are frozen and lose it at the end. Um, they say they're the best team in London, but predictive insights say that they won't win the league this year. <laughs> they won't win it next year. And doesn't seem like it's going to change, unfortunately. <laughs> All other teams will catch them. All other teams will surpass them. And the same can be said of Manchester United. <laughs> so prescriptive insights. This is insight that helps you understand what you should do to achieve a particular outcome, to find the best solution for the problem. For example, an apple a day keeps the doctor away, not the red or green apple. But if you want a phone that works, <laughs> then the iPhone is the way to go. Samsung, Huawei, and all the rest won't give you the quality, but rather give you quality. Apple is the way to go. If you have anything else other than Apple, then I am sorry. So why is dealing in righteousness, justice, and equity? The fourth word that is an expression of the layer of wisdom. These three words are often linked to the character or the nature of God. Psalm 33, verse 4 to 5. For the word of the Lord is upright, and all his work is done in faithfulness. He loves righteousness and justice, and the earth is full of the steadfast love of the Lord. Wisdom is knowing what is right and doing what is right, not compromising truth or integrity. The best way to know what is right or wrong would be to know the law of God. We see this in Proverbs. Proverbs 2 verse 1, My son, if you receive my words and treasure up my commands with you, make your ear attentive to wisdom and incline in your heart to understanding. Yes, if you call out for insight and raise your voice for understanding, if you seek it like silver and search for it as hidden treasures, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth come knowledge and understanding. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk in integrity, guarding the paths of justice and walking over the way of his saints. So receiving the words of God helps us to be wise. His words bring insight. Remember the different types. His words bring wisdom, the ability to skillfully live in a practical way. His words and law are so important that we see it in the, center, in, in, in the first, first, four, first six chapters of, of Proverbs. Chapter 3, verse 1. My son, do not forget my teaching, but let your heart keep my commands. Proverbs, verse 4. Hear, O sons, a father's instruction, and be attentive that you may gain insight. For I give you good precepts. Do not, forget, do not forsake my teaching. Proverbs 6, verse 20 to 22. My son, keep your father's commandment and forsake not your mother's teaching. Bind them on your heart always. Tie them around your neck. Proverbs 6, verse 20 says, bind them to your heart. Without God's word bound in our hearts, there will be no transformation. Only through the word of God in our hearts can we be wise in dealing in righteousness, justice, and equity. Because he will transform us to know and be able to keep his commands and wisdom. The fifth word that is an expression of wisdom is prudence. Prudence means the ability to be cool-headed, being cautious. Proverbs 14, 14 verse 18 says, The simple acquire folly. Folly means foolishness. But the prudent, the cautious, the sensible are crowned with knowledge. 
The ones who are sensible, thoughtful, are crowned with the knowledge. Verse 18, the naive are unsophisticated and easy to exploit and in inherit foolishness. But the sensible are thoughtful and far-sighted and are crowned with knowledge. The sixth word that is an expression of wisdom is discretion, intelligent discernment. This is particularly aimed at the youth, the inexperienced and the immature. The immature the youth have the world vying for their attention and time. The best thing we can do is to give them wisdom and ability to intelligently discern. The only way they get this wisdom and discernment is to read Proverbs, is to read the word of God and to be transformed by it. The eighth word that is an expression of wisdom is guidance, meaning help and advice about how to do something or how to deal with problems. This help and and advice is from continuous learning. It is likened to learning and obtaining proof of learning, not the school of hard knocks, but the wisdom school of life through Proverbs. This is how the Holy Spirit works and conforms us to the likeness of Christ. As we continue to learn the word of God, as we meditate on it, as we grow in wisdom, the Holy Spirit is at work and helping us to live God's way. Solomon also tells us where to go and learn and how to obtain proof of learning. Proverbs 3, verse 5 to 7. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. Do do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. In all our ways we should acknowledge God. This means we recognize that he is God. We acknowledge his authority in what we're doing. If we acknowledge his authority, if we recognize him as God, he will make straight our paths. He will help us through the work of the Holy Spirit in us to live morally and upright lives in all that we do. The ninth and the last expression of wisdom is knowledge, meaning the fact or the condition of knowing something with familiarity, gained through experience or association. So in the knowledge of God, in the knowledge of who God is, familiarity of who God is, insight, remember the types of insight, we see his faithfulness, in the, in the description of insight. We know he loves us as we diag- in the diagnostic insight through the cross. In predictive insight, we know that he is God and he's faithful to the end because he has been faithful since the beginning. All the promises of God have been true and we await the return of Jesus because we know God has kept all his promises and prophecies before. We can trust him, we can build our life on him for we know he is God. We should fear the Lord. The word translated as fear in the Bible can refer to terror, the feeling from a frightening situation, or respect. Like the respect or fear that a servant would have for the master and serving the master faithfully. Or fear as in being in awe of a person in the presence of greatness. The fear of the Lord is a combination of all of these. It is recognizing God for who he is. He is majesty. Recognizing his power recognizing his majesty. To fear the Lord, you have a continual awareness of God, a deep reverence and awe about his majesty, his power, and his presence. Romans 1, verse 20, 21 to 22 says, For though they knew God, they did not glorify him as God or show gratitude. Instead, their thinking became worthless and their senseless hearts were darkened. Claiming to be wise, they became fools. These are people that seek wisdom outside of God. Seek wisdom ignoring wisdom. Their hearts were darkened and they became fools. It's impossible to have wisdom outside of the source of wisdom. Ask Pepsi. It's impossible to have Coke without having the source of Coke. It may look like wisdom. It will slowly show itself to not be what it is. To fear God means to revere, to feel deep respect or admiration for him, to submit to him and to walk in his ways. To revere God, you have to know him. You have to know his word. With his word in our hearts, only then are we able to revere him. Wisdom is a skill of living. It's practical knowledge. Practical knowledge that includes instruction or correction. This correction helps us to know and to get better at the skill of living. 
this correction coming through a relationship with God and through the work of the Holy Spirit in us, showing us and teaching us the skills of life. Wisdom comes through insight, growing in the ability to discern and to act in a wise way. Wisdom comes through righteous justice and equity, through knowing the law, through knowing the commands of God, knowing his word which then takes root in our hearts. Once it takes root in our hearts, once his word takes root in our hearts, it helps us to be righteous. It helps us to do what is just. It helps us to be fair and to be impartial in how we deal with people. Wisdom comes through prudence, being sensible and cool-headed, crowned with knowledge and the word of God which makes us wise. Wisdom comes in being Wisdom, learning wisdom as being in being in school is how we are guided. This is the guidance part of wisdom, through the work of the Holy Spirit and through coming to be immersed in the Word of God, to develop the right perspective and fear of God. Proverbs enables us to be guided to learn and to know how to apply what we learn to everything, and God will make straight our paths. Our last point, Jesus is the epitome of wisdom. At the end of the first chapter, we see the introduction of wisdom as a lady. Wisdom is personified, but this does not mean that wisdom is a woman. English does not use grammatical gender and classifying words like masculine, feminine, or neuter or neutral. The Hebrew language, which is used in Proverbs, uses grammatical gender. In many languages, including Hebrew, most nouns have a strong gender component. But the gender assignment is grammatical and does not necessarily indicate the physical gender of the object. So in English, the word wisdom is, is grammatically neuter, so it doesn't have a gender. But as we read it from Proverbs, we see that there is a gender to wisdom. The Hebrew noun for wisdom is hokma, and the word is grammatically feminine. So in Hebrew, it would have been natural for them to say she when referring to wisdom. So lady wisdom draws similarities to Jesus, and we see this in chapter 8 of Proverbs. Wisdom pre-existed creation from verse 22. The Lord possessed me at the beginning of his work. This is Proverbs 8, 22. Wisdom pre-existed before the mountains, from verse 25 of, of Proverbs 8, before the mountains had been shaped. Wisdom pre-existed before the waters were split, verse 28 of Proverbs 8. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there was no springs abounding with water. Wisdom pre-existed prior to creation. Wisdom assisted the Lord in creation. Proverbs 8 verse 30. Then I was beside him like a master workman. And I was daily his delight. Rejoicing before him always. Jesus participated in creation. John 1 verse 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. Jesus is the wisdom of God, 1 Corinthians 1 verse 24. But to those who are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God, Jesus points to himself as wisdom in Matthew 11 verse 19. He, son of man, came eating and drinking, and they say, look at him a glutton and drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and, and sinners, yet wisdom is justified by her deeds. So Jesus fulfills what is being said by wisdom. The good news is that wisdom is a person and his name is Jesus. And knowing him personally will make you wise. This is what we learn in the next seven weeks. We learn the wisdom of God from the book of Proverbs. We will learn how to practically live out the wisdom of God. We will learn and live out the fear of God as the beginning of all wisdom as we see, as we behold God and continue to see Jesus through the Proverbs. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you that Jesus is wisdom as we see through Proverbs. That we see that Jesus is the foretold wise king who came to save and die on the cross for our sins. That Jesus enables us and helps us to live right as we're continuously transformed to his likeness by the work of the Holy Spirit. 
I pray that you would help us to desire more and more to know wisdom, to know Jesus, to know your word. That as much as we open our mouths, that we would open your word. That your word would take root in our hearts. That you would be at work through your word to make us wise. That you would build up the fear of the Lord, which is the beginning of all wisdom, through the work and the power of the Holy Spirit in us. Would you draw us near to God? Would you draw us near to your word? Would you immerse us in your word? Would we grow in wisdom, in skillfully living practically in God's world through God's way? We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.